regular uh, scheduled meeting of the Federal Immigration Park District on uh, this one, June 21st, 2023, at 6 30 p.m. Yeah. Can you just in the Pledge of Allegiance this evening, I'd like to welcome you to the podium Kathy G, who is the director on the Rosemont Community Foundation Board and a coordinator for the Ro coordinator for the Rosemont Community Folds Project. And then following the pledge, planning technician Andrew Saltmarsh will do an introduction. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the God of the United States of America, the Chief Republic of which stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kathy, stay up there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kathy is a director um, on the Rosemont Community Foundation. Uh, she's a board director. I met Kathy last year as we began working together on the uh, Rosemont Community Polls Project, which we completed earlier this month and honored just this last weekend. I work with Kathy throughout every step of the project. Um, working with Kathy, I immediately noticed her kind attitude and the obvious care she has for her community. It's been a true pleasure to work with her throughout the entire process. I just want to say on behalf of CRPD, thank you, Kathy, and the Rosemont Community Foundation for beautifying CRPD's parks with your project, and we look forward to working together in the future. Yeah. All right. Hello. Oh. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So oh, that's what we got. Well, Danny captured that. Yeah. Thank you. We will consider any requests, um, the 2449 requests, and seeing none, no action taken on that item. Roll call. Director Mattis? Here. Director Langan? Here. Secretary Sloan? Present. Vice Chair Dantle? Here. Chair Yearwood? Chair Hearing. All right. Comments by the public on non agenda items? Thank you. Members of the public may address the board on district topics not listed on this agenda. Speakers are limited to three minutes. It's a violation of state law for the board to discuss or take action on non-agenda items. Board members may only briefly ask clarifying questions or refer the matter to staff. And I see no requests. All right, excellent. And uh, you went out there, so we will uh, move on to the consent calendar. Thank you. Consent calendar items are considered administratively routine and will be acted upon in one motion unless separate action on a specific item is necessary. The chairperson will consider any request for discussion on the item prior to approval of the consent calendar. And share your with, I would like to pull item C1 for a separate vote, requesting an abstention from Director Lane. All right. Uh, did we note it? All right. Uh, does anybody? Uh... You know, any of the public here, any questions about the consent calendar? Anyone on the board have any questions to discuss there? All right, anybody care to make a motion for C2 through C5? I'm making a motion. I move, I move that we uh, a motion to approve on the consent calendar C1. No, no, C2, C3, C4, and C5. All right. Motion by Secretary Sloan for C2 through C5. Second. Second by Vice <laughs> Chair, it's called the Vice President. Vice Chair Danville. Uh, roll call vote. Director Mattis. Aye. Director Langan. Aye. Secretary Sloan. Aye. Vice Chair Danzel. Aye. Chair Yearwood. Aye. <clears throat> All right. Would anybody care to make a motion for C1? I make motion for the directors for item C1. Second. Motion by the Vice Chair Danville, seconded by Director Mattis. Roll call vote. Director Mattis? Aye. Director Langan? Abstain. Secretary Sloan? Aye. Vice Chair Danzel? Aye. Chair Yearwood? Uh, aye. All right. Moving on to looks like presentations. 
Thank you. Item D1 is a presentation by Jeff Morrow, USA Softball Sacramento Commissioner, of a grant award to the Cordova Recreation and Park District. And I'll turn it over to Recreation Supervisor 2, Nina Siner, to do an introduction. She has some photos to show us. Well, good evening, Chair Goodwood and Board of Directors and CRG staff. I'm pleased to be here tonight to introduce the USA Softball Commissioner, excuse me, Jeff Mark. Jeff has served as the Commissioner of USA Softball Sacramento since January 2022. Jeff previously served as an adult softball supervisor at the Greater Sacramento Softball Association, GSSA. And before that, he worked for the City of Houston for many years and for El Camino prior to that. CRPD works closely with USA Softball Sacramento and GSSA in conjunction with our adult softball leagues. One of the goals of USA Softball Sacramento is to provide resources for public agencies for improvements and projects to softball facilities. Therefore, they offer an annual public agency grant to support that effort. CRPD has been lucky enough to be awarded that grant throughout the year since 2013, receiving a combined, excuse me, a combined total of $6,000. $500. So I have some pictures here that I want to share of projects that um, have this grant has supported. So for the 2023 grant, scroll down here, we have on the screen, so it is those chairs and umbrellas. We got three of those. Those are going to be used to help protect our scorekeepers from the elements during our adult softball leagues. So that's been great. These are um, ball and bat racks that are in each of our three dugouts, um, excuse me, six dugouts on the three fields for all the players to use, which have been a huge help. These are fans that are provided. Um, it's very warm out there, so that's been great for the players to stay cool. And then last year, um, these 300 foot uh, distant marker signs. Uh, that's what we that's what we brought use the funds for that. So we have distant marker signs on each of the three softball baseball fields in the sports complex. So I think that's it, Jeff. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, as Nina said, my name is Jeff Morrow, and I'm the uh, commissioner CEO of the Greater Sacramento Softball Association. Uh, we do business as also as USA Softball in Sacramento. We are a grassroots organization that works with all of our member agencies to provide recreational and competitive softball leagues for both the youth and adult in the greater Sacramento area. Uh, we are one uh, of 64 state and metro associations across the country for USA Softball, which is the national governing body of softball. Um, but USA Softball also is the uh, pipeline for our USA national teams, as well as our USA Women's Olympic softball team. Uh, currently, the Greater Sacramento Softball Association um, has nearly 10,000 youth uh, participating, as well as coaches, as well as about 1,200 adult leagues playing throughout the Greater Sacramento area. And uh, the Greater Sacramento area, uh, our boundaries are, are fairly small. We're considered metro rather than a state. But we go as far north as Woodland, uh, as far south as Lodi, uh, east to uh, Truckee and South Lake Tahoe, and west to uh, the Dixon Winter area. All in all, we service uh, organizations in seven different counties. As a commissioner, I get to do a lot of good things and things sometimes that are not so great, but uh, tonight's one of the good things I had to do, and that's to assist one of our member agencies with a with the hand up to help with their facility improvements. And um, <coughs> Greater Sacramento Softball Association, over probably the last, would say the last 20 plus years, we've uh, spent over a quarter of a million dollars that we're, we've given back to our uh, member agencies in helping with uh, facility improvements. And we uh, find that as a, a great cause to help out everybody that's involved with, with the game of softball. And uh, today I'm here to award. Uh, 
Cordova Recreation Park District, one of our 2023 grant award recipients, a $900 grant to assist them with their um, facility improvements. And I am here to answer any questions that you might have regarding GSSA or USA Softball Sacramento. Yeah, does anybody have any questions? <clears throat> We are going to do a photo op. Yes, I got one. I got one of the the checks that we always like to do. We were here last year to do a presentation. We would like to do it again. We put it on our Facebook page that we uh, show all of our member agencies and the things that we do that we give back to our agencies. So, all right, all right. thank you. Thanks so with that, we'll do our yeah. photo thank Anything on this one? Yeah. And Saturday. Yeah. Do we want to put the best drop on this? Do you want to handle the chat? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're going to take a couple. Ready? Go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Silly but sad. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks. Oh, that's this is you know, right there. Yeah, right so there. Nina, you're gonna have a hard time making you sign. I mean, I've I'll not gonna get chilled out. Yeah, it's like it's just it's like Oh, these get on the end. Oh, the end of the uh, oh, yeah. All right, uh, so uh, we're all back in our seats. Excellent. Uh, I guess we'll move on to uh, item E committee reports. Thank you. Item E1 is an ad hoc committee report from the CRPD City of Rancho on June 5th, and that's Chair Yearwood and Vice Chair Dan. All right, Vice Chair Dan, so I'll, I'll let you go first. Um, it was the first time we've met with the this, with Diddy in, in quite a while, but it, it was a good meeting. It was a robust uh, agenda for that day. I think we had seven seven items on it. Knowing we weren't going to get through all seven, we went to the the top of the list and went over things that uh, we felt were most important. The one I would report out on today is that we talked to the city and know what was going on and how our optimized plan was. Um, so they understood what we were doing, why we were doing it, and some of the concerns that our community did have for us. Um, they, the response back, I think, was was well taken. Um, other than that, it was it was good to meet and um, hear some of the things the city had to say. Um, I, I think they appreciated where we were coming from on the optimized plan. There were other one other topic that we did discuss, and I will let you hear what discuss that. We met with uh, Gatewood and uh, Sarah Dubai. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, the other thing we talked about, uh, well, one of the bigger talks was homelessness. Uh, I don't remember the sergeant, the sergeant, <laughs> or the, the officer that was there, uh, talked about the, the homeless and their kind of their what they're doing and their coordination with the park district and other agencies, and they were very complimentary. Of, I believe it was. Last morning, uh, and uh, how responsive he is and our staff is to any issues that come up, and they work really well together from everything I hear, and uh, so that was very nice to hear. Um, it had been a long time since we had uh, talked with the city. I said the last time we talked with the city, um, so it was good to get together. Uh, I'll piggyback a little bit off the optimized plan. Do we have a a plan to councilwoman full of uh for us to present that to them at some point. Do we have that lined up? Uh we are working with the principal uh Casey, please, uh 
uh, to schedule something uh, in later summer. Okay. So, yes, that is to be announced. Um, another thing we, we did talk briefly about was the uh, Little League Allstrom and Curve Lane is, is now kind of back burner. There's, not, there's more things going on or whatever, something of that nature. Uh, and then we talked a little bit about the, their 20th anniversary, ours coming up. So it was a very nice uh, meeting. It was uh, educational, I think. I don't think they uh, know. They, I mean, they, it was something they didn't realize. The biggest takeaway, I think, one of them took away from it is we were talking about getting grant funding. And it's a very small area that we can do that in. And they were surprised to discover most parts of Rancho Cova are eligible for grant funding for like park retreat and things like that. Because the city's doing such a wonderful job and bringing up the media to come homes and things like that. So that was kind of an eye opener for one of them. So, with that, uh, hopefully, future in the later year, uh, later summer, uh, having them see the optimized plan, that'd be nice. So, that's uh, all I have to say on that. So, I guess we'll go on to E2. Wait, can we discuss it? No, we're just recording that. Thank you. I have E2 is the standing committee report. The PMRD oversight bond meeting on June 8th, and that's Vice Chair Danzel and Director Mattis. Director sure, Mattis, you, oh, you want to start? You want me to? Oh, I'll go. I mean, we had a really good meeting, uh, my first one. So, very excited with the, I guess the number of applicants was very, very positive. It was a big, big bunch. So, we had some time to go through them, and quite a few of them were really qualified too. So, that was good. Mm -hmm. uh, so looking forward to bringing those recommendations to the board here the next month. Yes. We'll bring those names to the board next month for approval. Um, I mean, not much more, more to say than yes, we did have, we, we have three zones that we're, we're looking at, two for Ranch Perdo, one for the Goldberger area. The, the candidates that were there were definitely highly qualified. Um, it was looking at them, it, it's gonna be, there's gonna be some, Decisions that need to be made by this full board on where, where we move forward. So, but highly qualified applicants this time. It was great, great to see that. All right. Um, could we go by, can we go back? Apparently, Secretary Sloan had a question about e, uh, e one. Can we go back? Okay, there? sure. What was your question? No, I just had a question about you mentioned the Little League complex was put on the back burner. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? They put it on the back burner. They just said there's no. They're, they're funded. looking at some. They're looking at other things, and they're looking at other facilities. Right. That's something that yeah. it's just that it's not. Uh, it's been put on on the back burner for the moment. Yeah. That was a city decision. I hope so. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. I guess we'll move on to E three. Thank you, item E3 is an ad hoc committee report for a park facility naming, which took place on June 15th, and that's Chair Yearwood and Vice Chair Danzel. I guess I'll start. Oh, sure, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, park, uh, park, parks and facility naming, it's, that committee has come a long ways in the time that I've been here, um, how things have changed and what, what we're what we're looking at and how how those decisions are made. Um, we did have, I don't remember, seven, eight, um, that were brought to us by the public to look at and consider. Um, one of my questions is, currently when we look at parks, we get a, a name from the developer, a name from staff, and then there's a, a typically a third one that, that pops in there, and how is that going to work? And we, we discussed that. Um, we're still going to get the first two. The third one, it's something the board gets to decide whether we put a person's name on it or if we stay with the developer's name. We, you know, so that was, and then out of that list, the qualified people um, or persons, um, you know, that'll be a decision for the board. So that's just recommendation off of, of the committee how who moves forward after background checks and everything else. Because we're actually going to do that, not just name and oh, 10 years down the line, here's some bad things. So it was, it was, it's a process and it's, it's a good process. So we finally put into place to move forward on this. All right. Yeah, we had uh, 
we reviewed seven applications and we discovered there was actually an eighth one that we will come back at a later date to to review and get it in the process. So uh, a very broad group of people. So uh, it was nice. Um, so we were in the process of uh, vetting and, and all those good things and we will come back probably later, uh, maybe September. September. Okay. So there was, and again, once we get through all of that background check, it, not necessarily all of those 88, 88 people will eventually end up on the last list. So, but if some people have as an option, we won't have to name the park after somebody. It's just a list to have to consider for naming it after somebody. So, Can I add? absolutely. Um, is there a, a checklist of certain <laughs> criteria that, that, that qualify? Person to have them in a park name that room? There, there was some up. qualifiers on there. I don't know the specific. I mean, well, you know. Yeah, whether they were in political office or you know, long time business owner, or long time supporter of parks. The, the main was was um, somehow tying them back to the parks and things of that nature, or having it had been correct me if I'm wrong, a substantial contribution to the community. So, but uh, is that fair? Yeah, there are criteria, of yeah. course. Um, and the evaluation of those applications was based on that criteria from this committee. Uh, they looked at the criteria and the ones that they're deciding to bring forward for background checks meet that criteria. So, um, yeah, that's and kind of how they changed it. This is approval by the full board. Yes. Yeah. So once, yeah, once we get to that final list and, and we'll say all of them make it through and there'd be eight names and we'll go through whether we want to approve that list of eight. I would assume if they wanted to pull somebody off of it, they could just only approve a certain number. It's not all played in mind. No. Uh, yeah, well, so the recommendation from this committee eventually will be vetted out. So they're at the process of they have filtered the first round. The second round is they have said these folks have met the criteria and the eligibility to be moving on to the background check phase. And so we're doing some double checking with the applicants to make sure they're comfortable with that first. Uh, if they give us the green light, we will be doing the background checks. We're assuming it will clear. Uh, after they have officially cleared the background check, then we will be meeting again to review that other application that came in afterwards that still is eligible and qualified. We have to do that, and then we also have to just verify the background checks to make sure that that list, original list, uh, made that criteria for the background check to be offered on that list for the full board to consider uh, whether they want that to be those folks be considered for a possibility of a park being named after them. But it has been vetted out prior to it coming to the board, so you're not having necessarily a deep dive conversation about these folks. All of that background check and the filter has been put on by this committee. But if the two people that are on this ad hoc committee, mm -hmm. they're not, they haven't decided who. No, 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 none of our committees are deciding committees. They are recommendation committees, like all of our ad hoc committees uh, have been. They don't make the decision for the full board. Oh, are, are, would these two people that are on this committee be recommend, re recommending one of these names to the three of us? They'll be recommending the looking, list looking, of looking for one more. They'll be recommending the list of us. Yeah, yeah. Say, say only five of them agree they want to do it and then pass everything. Then we would look at that list and then bring that list to the board. Right. If, and those five names plus the yeah, and if, uh, if the three of us are not happy with any of them, then you then you then you would turn around and, and go with the community name, the one that the developer chose, the one the staff chose, or you decide on another name. That's like, but we're all gonna sit down at the board of five and yeah, like we don't like anything. Well, I didn't know because I think there needs to be we have ideas we want to present to them. Right. But I, I would say as a qualifier, it would not be the opportunity for you to suggest a new name. Oh, no, I, that I, has I, not been in that process. Yeah. But yes, that is typically how we do all of our ad hoc committees. It is a recommendation type of committee, which brings those recommendations to the full board for a vote and a consideration. All right. Good. All right. It looks like we will uh, move on to. I get all the shovel here. <laughs> oh, public hearing. Thank you. Yes, public hearing. I have one. 
Thank you. We reached that portion of the meeting for our public hearing. Item F1 is to adopt resolution 22-23-46, approving the preliminary budget for the Cordova Recreation and Park District for fiscal year 2023-2024 and authorize the general manager to file with the county auditor controller. And Chair oh. with if you would to the hearing. about that part. All right, it is. <laughs> 655, so we'll open the public hearing at 655. Let's get all excited about the presentation. <laughs> okay, I don't have a presentation. I'm going to keep this. Oh, you're going to keep it? Short and sweet. Okay. Yeah, because we just spent an hour and a half uh, on the, the workshop. So I was going to go with the highlights that came out of that. So good evening again, Chair Yearwood and board members. Uh, it's nice the preliminary budget. You know, we just had the workshop uh, just recently. And so some of the highlights, again, the process starts in January and in August the final. That'll be our, our last step. Today we're at the preliminary budget phase. And I'm excited to say that you know this budget incorporates services to the community for parks, facilities, and recreation, along with major development. And more specifically, it includes uh, six new parks going from 44 to 50 in inventory, which is incredible four additional full-time positions for supports and, and marks in administration, 2,900 additional part-time hours in recreational programming, uh, mostly in audits, uh, a potential cost of living adjustment of 3% for full-time staff, no additional debt, and then stick with the debt that we have. Uh, it does discuss 35 capital improvement and maintenance projects that benefits 21 parks, five facilities, and one trail area. Uh, it has additions to our equipment and fleet vehicles for park services and the Cordova Golf Course. It does have a subsidy for villages of Zipidel area that will come from the general fund. That's one assessment that required it. Uh, the delivery of an optimized plan. And again, we're going to be celebrating 65 years of uh, service for our community. So it's fantastic. Overall, the total budget is $22,390,500, a little bit more than 1958. Uh, 17.3 for operations and debt, and then $5 million is going to go towards fixed assets of capital improvements and equipment. In the package, there's documents, uh, supporting documents, this budget resolution, uh, the required county of Sacramento forms that we have to turn in along the schedules, um, account detail, the district-wide budget performance and proposal that you're used to seeing, uh, same format, it's also in there. And then a list of fixed assets for capital improvement projects and our equipment. It's a requirement that the county has that we uh, back that up. And so that's included. This budget will be adopted and filed in accordance with the California Code and with the County Auditor Controller's Office. And that's basically my presentation. Outstanding. All right. Uh, any public comment? I see no requests. All right. I see no one in the audience uh, waiting frantically. So we will close the public hearing at 6.58. And we will move to uh, any, I'll start at the end of the dais with the Director Mattis. Any questions? All right. Director Lane? No. Nope. Secretary Sloan? Yeah. Vice Chair Danzel? No. And I have none either. Oh, excellent. Would anybody care to make a motion? Right now, okay. I move that we adopt resolution uh, 2223 16, approving the preliminary budget. 46. 46? 46. Approving the preliminary budget for the Canola Recreation and Park District for fiscal year 2023 24, and authorize the general manager to file with the county under control. I have a motion by Secretary Sloan. Are you a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Daniel. Roll call vote. Director Mattis. Aye. Director Langan. Aye. Secretary Sloan. Aye. Vice Chair Gansel. Aye. Chair Yearwood. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. All right. So we are done with that. I, I have oh. kind of a late question on that. Um, oh. What? How do you decide where the five G powers go in these parks, or is is that a part of the money? I know that Miller Park has a very large 5G power. 
Yes, uh, we do have a process, and so it, it, we're very uh, community outreach and transparent. So the, the cell phone companies contact us, they fill out an application, and then we open it up for uh, public board meetings. And so that gives the public an opportunity to come and, and, and talk about it, the benefits and any you know barriers or, or concerns. Dangers. Dangers, yeah, anything that's on, on your mind. Okay. And so uh, there's definitely, we, we believe in community outreach, and, and anyone that can see the tower or be impacted by the tower, Obviously, we want them to have a say, so that's part of the process. So these are four four new parks that you're going to be putting in, right? And none of them are slated to have a cell tower in Corona, so. And all in the Rancho area. Yes. Yes. Okay. The new Rancho Cordova. Yes. The cell tower uh, revenue that we would receive for having those in a park, if that were the case, is not included in this financial budget. Right. Those are proposals that are being discussed at this time. Uh, but there has not been a move forward from any of the companies to request this board to, in essence, look at a conceptual plan for it. But what those cell tower companies were required to do by this board is to come to this board first, see if this board is open to the idea of having a cell tower based on their proposal. And then the next step would be for that cell tower company to go out to the community and have a very robust community outreach effort to make sure we're hearing the voice of the community. If there are some outstanding concerns, they have to come back to this board before they get the approval to move forward with that. So uh, we do, as Matt mentioned, uh, require a community outreach meeting, uh, and we ensure that they are messaging that to, of course, the immediate neighbors in a radius of approximately a mile around the cell tower site. So yes, there'll be absolutely opportunities uh, as they come forward for the community to be aware of that. Thank you. Good question, thank you. All right, so it looks like item G, regular calendar, there is none. I guess we'll get on to board of director items, H1. Thank you. Item H1A is to nominate a member of the board of directors to run for election to the Sacramento Local Agency Formation Commission, LACCO, as special district commissioner, and adopt resolution 22-23-47, supporting the nomination and service on the commission if elected. LACCO is comprised of seven commission members, two of which are selected by the independent special districts located within the county of Sacramento. One of the current special district commissioner's terms expires on December 31st of this year. The term for our commissioner is four years. This nomination is completely distinct from the special district advisory committee, on which CRP is currently represented by two board members, Director Langan, which is Office A, and Director Mark Mattis, Office B. And I did confirm with the executive director of LACCO that members of the Special District Advisory Committee can run for this nomination, and there is also no agency limit for representation to LACCO. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, any questions, comments, discussion? Anybody want to volunteer? Um, I have a question, Chair Sure. Sure. Ms. Jones, I'm not saying, is there a application process, a resume, that goes along with this if you if this board elects to put somebody forward. I'm just not, I didn't see it. I didn't see it in the material either, but typically we would provide the supporting resolution and then the director who's interested would provide a resume. Okay. So I think I did the one time I put my name of the hat. So you want a lot more laugh going in your life. <laughs> I can say this, but I work on Monday nights, so it's what I'm saying. Well, that's Wednesday. Wednesday. First Wednesday of the month at 5 30. First Wednesday of the month. Well, month off. The other ones are Monday, right? Yeah, okay. Do we want to go down the road and see if there's any interest in them? We'll start down there with Director Mattis. No, I, I don't. No. Okay. <laughs> no. Oh, I was, I was trying to try. Okay. How about you, Secretary Sloan? I'm cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, Vice Chair Dan. I am a political punishment. Um, commissioner um, would be somebody who has a bigger voice for that this agency. Uh, so I will put my name in that. Oh, all right. All right. Um, Second. 
There's still motion yet. Okay. Um, and I, I will, uh, I, I'm, hey, I'm more than happy to, I, you know, my, and my boss will be more than happy not to have to cover for me on the other night. So, all right. Well, uh, then, hey, can I make a motion? How about that? I move the board of directors nominate Vice Chair Dan to run for election to the Sacramento Local Agency Formation Committee as Special District Commissioner Officer Number 7 and adopt resolution 22-23-47 supporting the nomination and service on the commission. It will not be. Second. Who seconded? Oh, thank you. Uh, motion by uh, Chair Yearwood, seconded by Director Langan. Roll call, please. Director Madden? Aye. Director Langan? Aye. Secretary Sloan? Aye. Vice Chair Danville? Aye. Chair Yearwood? Don't go, aye. <laughs> he volunteered, aye. <laughs> All right. Yeah, good luck. Can't wait to, I can put a sign in my yard if you need to. <laughs> All right, so that's all for H1, right? So we're going on to H2. Thank you, item H2A, our training reports, and there are several. So I'm sure you're with, I will let you just run that section okay. that you prefer. Sure. All right, well, we'll just start uh, with the first one there on the list. Uh, Secretary Sloan, looks like you uh, wrapped up your AB 1825 sexual harassment prevention training. How'd that go? Token will be? Yeah. Any other secretary? It went, it went very well, you know, except for the, uh, the process of, of trying to take the training on any other device besides my phone. So I had to, every question and thing, I had to scroll, enlarge, reduce, scroll, enlarge, read, so it was, a, it was a bit of a challenge and it took me a couple of times to pass the test, but I finally had flying colors and passed it. And um, it's, you know, the training's really changed a lot. You know, I, I think about the days that, you know, when I first started working for a public agency and all the rules, it's gotten so many more rules out there and things you have to really be aware of. Um, so um, I think it's great training. I think everybody should. Uh, I think everybody in the world should take this training to get through. They should all have to pass it, and they have to go to a different world. The hustle. <laughs> an, an, an asteroid somewhere. Oh, you sure. didn't pass the training. Sorry, you're going. You're living somewhere else. <laughs> Good for two years. Yeah. Well, then new things will change in two years. You know? Well, the good news is, don't worry, ethics training is right around the corner. <laughs> I'll say ethics training is just around the corner. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, we, uh, we'll move along to the CRPD annual conference held uh, May 17th through the 20th of 2023 in Yosemite, California. Yosemite. Yosemite. Um, so I guess we'll start with you, Secretary Sloan. No, you can. Why not? Start with me. Um, I'm sorry that my two other board members had uh, their conflicts, but I think they would have really enjoyed this this conference. It um, there was a lot of of uh, spiritual team building kind of a thing that went on this one. It wasn't just a lot of uh, you know breakout sessions or somebody telling you how to uh, use this equipment or use that and you know, kind of thing. Uh, they had something that was called the forced therapy, where you went out into you know, hiked a little ways and you sat there and you actually had to stop and smell the roses and relax and you take in all the uh, things around you and it, it's it, it's building. It, it's really a life building kind of experience where you're healthy and all that. And I, I just recently did it out by my parkway, out by the, the river when the sun was setting. I had the same type of experience. And the uh, other part of that, because it was a two part thing, if you're out, part of the half the group was doing that, the other part was in playing this, uh, this workshop, kind of a card game, where they were, you're all dealt every, you have all these different uh, projects that you're, you're trying to build. Um, put into a facility, and you, so but how, what do you want? And this, you want you want swimming, you want gymnastics, you want meeting spaces, and we had to play all these cards 
and you had to create a budget. Each one was cost a certain amount. And that we we all had to go prioritize and have working together as a team to come up with, you know, do we need that kind of a size of a building or can we use that for both things? You know, it's going to be a meeting space and a uh, daddy daycare kind of thing. It'll be both. So it was very interesting. I, I think that if you guys would have loved it. I think you would have had a good time. Your kids would have. It was a, it was, I think we loved it as a, I don't, I don't like that. You and I became one with nature. Yeah. But uh, we did. We did. Yeah. With the uh, predator call out there. I heard that. Yeah. It sure did sound like a predator. Um, the other, the trains are good. The, 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 I think the top part of the whole thing was, is that we had two breakout um, round tables. And um, one, the second one was hosted by uh, Chair Daniel. And it really, I think it was one of the best we've had organized wise. Um, five chairs, for example. Oh, my five. Oh, well, okay. I'm not going to steal his thunder. So, anyway, no, you can't talk about yourself. I can rave about you. It was, it was a well leaded discussion and a lot of great topics. Um, some of the other topics were uh, <laughs> turf. Uh, fair play for girls. You know, I sat in that one for a long time. I had I move around because I take photographs of all the people talking. But the one was beyond the surface, and that was maintaining uh, your turf uh, different turf trends that are happening. Um, oh, but okay, I'll leave something for you guys to say. Talk about the food. How about that? All right, <laughs> Vice Chair Dan. Thank you. Sure. Um, Forest therapy. This was the second time I've done forest therapy. Um, I did stay awake this time. Um, yeah, those of you were around the last time when we did it with the CRPD and we went to Paradise. Um, it was very calming, very relaxed. And the instructor says, Go ahead, sit however you want, relax. And sitting in nature, just listening to her. Her voice, I keep telling her, I've met her several times. She just needs to do that whole speech on a on a tape and you know you pay for it. Just not a problem. Um the director of parks and rec here, Jill kept poking me to make sure I stayed away. Um actually she didn't, but we we did have some fun with some of the flies um because they felt like they were going a thousand miles around from under heads. But it was it was the second time I've done it, different location this time. Just as just as meaningful, um, bigger group this time. And one of the things that we do is you get to just they ask some questions and you kind of get to describe what's you know what your thoughts, thoughts and feelings were, some of the things you felt. So I, I do enjoy it. Um, I'd like to try it on a beach sometime, <laughs> but uh, not not quite there yet. Um, one of the other classes that I did did take um, was maximum in your um, your IRA on tax credit. That, um, yeah, we're talking taxes and credits, and it was very interesting because it all came down to electricity and lighting, and I was like, where's Matt when I need him? Um, because he probably would have understood it a, a, a lot more. That session was not, I think there was, out of the 76 attendees to the conference, I think there was eight of us in the room. Well, that one, everybody else went to the uh, the uh, turf one or the girls Girl sports one. Everybody just said that they weren't listening to IRAs and stuff like that. Um, but it was very, very enlightening. And how how some of that applies didn't see much that applied to us um, because we're not building currently. We're not building major facilities. We're not you know to be able to get those credits. We did have um, two roundtables um, for the board of directors and. They, they were both great sessions that this year. The second one um, I did lead, and we had talking points, and it, it was just it, in the past we've had these these meetings where it's everybody sitting in a in a kumbaya circle, and one person gets up, and then it just gets out of control. And so we had some talking points this year that we could actually go off to try and keep that that meeting more more contained and not go so far off topic because. In the past, we'll get on to topics like ERAF, one, and one person runs, turns around and takes that meeting over, and nothing else gets discussed for an hour and a half. 
you know, he turns in the first five minutes and then we're talking about ERAP and most people don't understand what ERAP is. So it's, you know, you got the, the, the lying stares on people's faces, but having some of those discussion points, um, it was interesting. Some of the questions that were asked, you know, how do you measure, and my session um, as a board member, how do you, um, how do you measure success for your district as a board member, you know, and got, 25 different answers from people, you know, some, and, well, if I get reelected, that's, that's showing that I'm this, but some were like, well, if the district's doing well financially, then that's success. It doesn't matter whether I get reelected, the district's doing well. So it was just interesting to see different points of views um, from different agencies. We did talk about, you know, how to, how to help, um, because our ours was all board members, but, they, um, a lot of these board members aren't engaged with their staffs as much as I think some of us are. Um, and that's not, not a good thing, not a bad thing, but some of them don't know anybody but their general manager. They couldn't tell me who their clerk of the board was, who their director of parks and recs were, who their CFO was, they, they or human resources. They had no idea who these people were because they've got a general manager who's, who can only talk to me at all times, and if I'm not here, you're not talking to me. So it's just different to hear different agencies and how things are and, you know, learn from different agencies. I learned that there's an agency in, in our age, within our group that has two helicopters as part of their, you know, and it's like, oh, that's that's big district then. You know, why do they have them and what are they using them for stuff? So, um, it was definitely a good conference, and I will let Chair Droid. I don't know what else he's going to talk about now. But when you cross off the helicopters, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. About it was considered the Met had it before the president. Yeah, as I was say, I had to revise the budget. <laughs> well, that's the same one. It's like it's East Bay, right? Where they have like 60 yeah. municipalities they have to work with. Right. Yes. Well, you know, there were some people asking, how do you work with your one city or whatever? And they're like, one city. <laughs> well, apparently they use their helicopters to fly from one city to the other, but. They also have like a fire district or something. Right? You're in charge of that. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. So, yeah, that was, I did actually have the helicopter. That. Sorry. That's all right. Um, this one talking about something. Yeah. But um, I attended the, I don't remember what it was called, but it was the one where you had to kind of build a, a uh, community center and, and all of that. And there was two scenarios. And you know, we got split up into tables of about like five and six. And one group had, uh, they had a, a budget. They just said, here's how much money you could spend. There was no really analysis behind what they need, to, what money they really needed. They just went out, got their bonds passed. They got the money. The other side did all this community outreach, found out all these things. That's that the other thing that helped them plan this community center. I I was on the one of the tables that just had the money, but not the uh, outreach to the community. Basically, had staff recommendations and the city council's recommendation. And uh, so, and then it's like, okay, now take this deck of all these amenities and figure out what you want. And you're trying to figure out from what the staff of the city thought was what were really necessary. At our table, we ended up kind of looking at the demographics to figure out what would probably be more appropriate for the, the people who encompass that, that area. So we ended up having way more money than we needed to build a, a palace. Yeah. yeah, we did. Oh yeah, we, we didn't spend all of our money. Uh, we ran, we only had an hour or something. We were doing a deep dive, but um, so it was very interesting to, to not have kind of like all the outreach from the community members and things about what they were looking for. You were basically just going off what the city council wanted and what city staff or the district staff said you should get. So, so we kind of included some of those things, but also looked other places. So that one was interesting. Um, and then in the afternoon, I went off for, for my forest therapy. Uh, it was, I ain't gonna lie, I was a little skeptical, but it was all right, it was okay. Uh, it was interesting to hear after every little session, you know, and she'd ask these questions about what, you know, what were you thinking about or, you know, whatever, and everybody would kind of share. Very interesting. Uh, Blake, right? Okay. Uh, it was, it was, um, it was interesting. Yeah. So, uh, and then uh, sat in the one, one round table with the, the one where we found out about the massive uh, district with all the helicopters. And, um, I don't remember who that facilitator of that first day one was, but. Doug, Doug Nichols kept ran a tight ship. Yeah. <laughs> no taking over the meetings. No, uh, no, just speaking out of turn. So uh, he was a, a force to be reckoned with. Uh, and then the next day, on the Friday, I believe it was. Um, I sat in one about the capital, the ten-year capital improvement plans. 
I don't know, it was a two year budget. And a two year budget. This guy was really pushing two year budgets because he believes in two year budget, two year budgets. Um, so that one I think was, I would say, was probably be more geared towards uh, staff and things like that as opposed to board members. But, um, and then I sat in on the one that taught me so much about <laughs> synthetic services okay. and the life and the beginning and now and uh, how all the pits are just like the organic way to go, no more rubber tires. So, but it was it was interesting. I uh, I would have probably been uh, more interested in the one about uh, I think it was female sports, but. I went into that one and I, I stuck it out as a trooper. So, but it was a, it was good. It was an overall uh, great conference, and um, you know it's always good to get with other folks that are, are your peers and equals and just talk about what's going on and how you're handling things and you know whatever the usual stuff. So that is all I have on that. Oh, we still have to do the board retreat. Oh, okay, all right, board retreat. Uh, on 6 12 2023. Well, I'm not going to start with you, Secretary Sloan. I'm going to start all the way down there at the end with oh. Director Maddox. Oh, I thought it was great because uh, the areas we went to, because I used to live in Anatolia and uh, Cabal Ranch, moved out of Anatolia about uh, October of 2020. So it was kind of good going back to the old neighborhood, seeing the development and the growth that's happened since then. And I was blown away by what's coming in. And it's exciting to see what's coming in. And it's glad to see that there's uh, lots of land. I'm actually glad that the developers are moving forward with the parks as they're building. I remember when I was at Fall Ranch, but that was also when the market tanked and I was one of the six homes and then they left. And so that park just sat empty for years until I moved out of there um, to Anatolia. But yeah, it, it's really good to see the growth going on down there. And it's going to be exciting to see for the next. 20, 30, 40 years, what happens and comes to that area. And it was also a great time to spend time with everybody and hear the stories. And we had a great tour guide. <laughs> it was a great, great time. All right, uh, Director Lane. Yes, yeah, so uh, it was a great time. Had uh, a lot of fun. Um, tour guides were amazing. And uh, it just, it, it, it really is cool. Um, kind of grown up uh, in the Sacramento area and just being able to see the development and think back to when I was in elementary school and Aerojet was still, you know, doing their thing and and um, we'd have to like remember, oh, if there's a loud boom, it's probably just Aerojet. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> um, and so just to see you know, like that, all that stuff out there is, is getting developed and um, just to, to see the, the, that they're, there's going to be parks and that the, the developers are thinking ahead about that instead of, you know, afterwards or whatever uh, is it, good and it's exciting for uh, those families that will be able to move in and, and, and have a good fun park to go play at. Thank you, sir. Uh, Secretary Brown. Well, I think next time it would be kind of nice to have a helicopter ride. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, mm -hmm. During the same tour, maybe we can borrow East Bay yeah. or they can come by and pick us up. You can have cola. You can have a helicopter. Can have cola or Pepsi. <laughs> um, it's to see the to see the land before it's developed is very interesting. You know, I almost kind of wish I had some of the glasses you can put on that shows it developed. I don't know. You can see it the future kind of like appear in front of you. Um, and we also drove by a lot of our existing parks that are out there. Which are still gems in the, in the, in the out, outer, outer area there that uh, we stopped off and did some, you know, soul searching in some of the park. It's, it's to see how we how far we've come and then to, to realize we have that much more distance to go, you know, to develop. And that's a, it's a, a lot of, it's an envy of, I think, a lot of the, uh, the districts in the state of California because they don't have a lot of growth area. We have, we're going to double in size in the next 20, 30 years. It's crazy. Um, and just to drive by this, this land, and I'm thinking if we, if we know where the park's going to be, let's plant the trees now. So when we have the tree, when they're ready to build the park, we've got big trees to, for the shade. 
if that's possible, that'd be kind of cool. But I, I appreciated the district putting that together. It was a it was an interesting way of having a retreat that was a, a real treat. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair Danzel. So this was the first block tour I think we've done since 2010. Um out of the district of the district. Um district has definitely grown from from where we sat in 2010. We continue to grow as we heard earlier tonight. We've got six more parks coming, probably 10 in the next you know three years, which is incredible. And that's not even talking Rio del Oro yet. I mean, we're that's that's another huge community park that will eventually get there. Um so but it like like other directors have said, seeing seeing things with you know dirt and knowing eventually that's going to be a beautiful green green grass area with play play structure possibly or basketball court or tennis court or pickleball court or um cricket field whatever um it's it's amazing to see you know where where we've come from as director Langman said growing up in the community um I remember as a small child launching you know, Estes Rockets in this very spot before City City Hall was built. You know, the, the casino was right there, but it was um, a different building at the time. And, you know, this was just open land. You had to, you know, drive a four wheel drive truck out here on the dirt and everything. So to watch the community grow and continue to watch it grow is just amazing. And the great things that come when we do put parks in our communities is just, I, I look forward to it. I think you're referencing the Chesapeake Pub, aren't you? That's what the casino was originally. Yeah, it was the Chesapeake Pub, and they were kind of a rifle shop, right shop, shop yeah. for quite a few years. Yes, yeah. back in the day, it was originally Chesapeake Pub. Um, it, it was uh, it was a, a nice to have a bus tour of my neighborhood. Thank you all for coming. Um, but <laughs> I was just thinking about it the other day because when I moved, we moved into Crestley Ranch three years ago, and Montalena was barely getting started. The ranch hadn't even started. And Square Cypress had four houses. Now it's got hundreds. I know it was more than that. But it's just every other day, there's something else being built. You know, that shopping center across the way from the Rayleigh's hadn't even started yet. And, uh, so, but yes, it was, it was nice to get out and see the district and take us all the way out to that uh, easterly boundary and all that. It's kind of amazing how big the district is when you go and drive it. So, uh, it was and again. It's always nice to get together, and we did afterwards have a nice meal and chat and got to know each other a little better. So that's always a good thing. So and uh, so, yes, I think uh, our general manager is one of our tour guides, and Laura Taylor. Others are other uh, tour guide. What was our driver's name? Don. Don. Don did wonderful. We didn't go off the road hardly. No. <laughs> but uh, so yes, it was uh, it was it was nice. It's always nice to get together. And, Fact that the little field trip bus tour was really was good too. So, all right, I think uh, that wraps that up. So, <laughs> let's head to B community activity reports and comments. So, uh, carry on. Oh, carry on. All right. All right. Sorry. So, I guess we'll do what we always do. We'll start down at the end with the director of that. Oh, we went to uh, Branch Grove Little League in the season. Uh, on May 20th, that was a blast out there to celebrate the end of the season. And it was just a great season, especially with the weather this year. It's held up. It was just a really nice time. It was a big, big turnout. So they got really good uh, uh, prizes and they had some fundraising going on. So I think they did pretty well. Uh, celebrated, went to the 50th anniversary for uh, the little steamers. That was a blast. It took my kids. They loved that. And I remember when I was their age going there, so it was it was fun seeing their their eyes just pop up and being able to ride these trains. Um, went to the Sacramento Lafco Special District Advisory Committee. That was that was interesting. Learned a lot about water districts <laughs> and how those function and work. Um, so looking forward to the next one. Um, we had the Fetterspiel uh, Park improvement. I was glad they would make it out to that one. That was good. So it was. It was interesting. It was, it was great hearing the story of how it started. And so the community, because remember as a kid, there used to be the pool there and other things over the years. So it was nice seeing that there's new development or new um, elements of the park being added to improve it for the community. Um, 
made it out to the uh, get the scoop with uh, Sheriff Cooper at Rosemont Park on June 4th. And that was a fun time because um, I remember I was in fourth or fifth grade and uh, Cooper, when he was the uh, anti-gang force cop at the time, came to my school and presented, you know, anti-drug and all this stuff. And while I mentioned it to him, I said, hey, that's remember you. I remember watching your career and that uh, the teacher that I had was lasting me and his eyes lit up. And so that was, you know, that was his best friend in high school. And I've always remembered those two together and we shared some stories about last week because I ran into him uh, years later when I was coaching and um, we reconnected and that's when I found out what was going on and it was just blew me away. Uh, but it was nice uh, talking to Cooper and um, we had our budget workshop. All right, uh, Dr. Lane. Yeah, so on um, June 3rd, uh, the Rosemont Community Art and Bowls Installation Day uh, went out there. Uh, I really just want to uh, really uh, compliment uh, Mark, the landscape supervisor. Uh, he was teaching and, and he just did a great job. Uh, and really, uh, the, the Girl Scout troop that was there, they were amazing. But, but what really impressed me was he um, let a lot of other people do the work and, and, and uh, taught the girls how to do stuff is, you know, cement and spreading bark and uh, all, all that good stuff. Um, and the Girl Scouts, they worked super hard. Um, I, I was really impressed with how hard they were working, how much they did. Uh, I would say uh, they probably put in the majority of those polls. Um, and so it was a, it was cool just just to see that. Um, I came there, I was like, well, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely work. I'll keep dirty. Like, I don't mind that kind of stuff. And like, they were just like, all, all in it, so it was good. It was great, um, and it was just cool to to see more of that project um, and to be able to be a part of it uh, as as it uh, as it goes on. Um, and then uh, June seventeenth, um, the uh, uh, dedication for the uh, art for the community uh, Rosemont Community Park. Um, it was really unfortunate that they got vandalized just a few days earlier. But once again, uh, the CRPD staff did a great job of cleaning them, getting all the, um, the black spray paint off. Not all of it, but the majority. So you can still tell what uh, the polls were um, and just uh, what they would, what they said or the artwork that was on them. And so um, thankfully, we had paint that get graffiti stuff on them already. So that was that was good and definitely thankful for that. Um, and then just being able to hear from the different groups that did a poll um, at the event uh, was just cool to, to hear uh, what those polls meant to them, why they did what they did. Um, and also, it was just great to see the uh, community out there in support um, of the event and uh, of the project. So looking forward to uh, phase two of that project and seeing uh, when that uh, will, uh, will roll on. And then... Um, the budget workshop session today, June twenty first. Great time. <laughs> Many have said that. Great job, Matt. <laughs> yes. Yes, I agree. All right, Secretary Snow, you're up. Well, the other knock it out of the park. Yes, energy. Yes, very much. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got quite a long list here. On May thirteenth. Uh, I took part in the uh, W.H. Williamson Park Ribbon Cutting presentation. It was uh, nicely attended. It was a beautiful day. Um, we had a photograph that I believe appeared in the uh, something or in the paper. I think it's in this, this edition now. I think there's a couple out there. Want to grab one? Um, the next thing was on the May 20th, we I drove from uh, Yellowstone uh, all the way to the uh, Hagen Park for the Sacramento Valley Live Steamers Railroad Museum 50th anniversary. I walked towards the uh, the area which was where that little waterfall there was upstream, where they actually held the same event 50 years ago for uh, for the I think it was uh, at that time. It was I forget how many the, the many uh, 
um, feet of track they have, but we they've got like now they have like close to eight thousand feet of track out there. I think they started with a couple a thousand or something. Um, the next thing was the that same day I I walked over and met with some other people from this group here to the California Mermaid Convention at uh, at the uh, Cordova Community Pool. And it's always nice to uh, see what's going on with that convention. It seems to be one of the very large industry. I heard something on the news recently how the things for to buy and, and the certificates that you can get, you have to get to be able to hold your breath a certain amount of time in the water and, and become a certified mermaid. I mean, I remember that movie Splash. It was one of my favorite movies. Daryl Hannah. Um, the next one was the Breca. We had our story committee meeting, and um, on the agenda was um, unfortunately the this is twice this has happened to our little library out there it's been vandalized, and this was there was some altercation in the park that happened at night, uh, and then but somehow the library got demolished again. So um, the Breca Steering Committee is now proposing to create, put up a, you know those, the Sacramento Bee boxes or metal that you they have out at the Coriana Plaza, you pull the thing down, you grab the paper out of it. We're talking about making that into a, a library. Kind of was like, so if you would hit that with a baseball bat, you're probably not going to do that much damage to it. If you hit the wooden house that people create, they destroy them, they just blow them up. So that's a thought. And there is someone in the uh, Breca uh, community that's also a welder that he, he might put together, a, a, make it look like a house. You know, not just, it's not gonna look like a bee box. It's gonna be painted, it's gonna have a roof on it. And it's gonna be really cool, I hope. And I hope that uh, that's the district's aware of that and so uh, it's gonna be hopefully happening. Might be a new trend. The next thing was the on uh, June 2nd, the Fettersville Park Walkway Improvement Celebration and Ice Cream Social. When you get ice cream from Witch's Ice Cream, that was nice. Uh, we had a ribbon cutting on the on the new trail. I think I think uh, uh, Vice Chair Danzel walked it and he said it was a while. I think only it worked. It's okay. It's a third. I'm third. I'm third. I'm third. I'm third. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was it was it was a nice little uh, celebration. Uh, on June second, that same night, I, I ran over to uh, Capital Village Village Green Park, and uh, they had the uh, CC a movie in the park. Of uh, this Cordova Community Council put on a Moonlight movie. It was the first one of the of the, of the year. They're doing five out there this month. Rosemont Community Art Pole Installation Work Day. I showed up. I got there about uh, maybe 20 minutes into the work level, maybe a half hour. Basically, they had already planted all the poles. The cement was mixed. Everything was up and going, and they were spreading the park, um, which I thought was kind of nice. You know, when you say it takes a village, man, it just they boom, they, they knock those things out. And, uh, and they, they looked uh, it was beautiful. And um, and then uh, I uh, on June 4th, I attended the Get the Scoop with Sarah Cooper. I thought it was burgers and badges, so I didn't know what they can do. Um, but it was nice because we used to walk around and, and be a kid and see all the uh, different uh, robotic uh, uh, devices that the law enforcement has and some of their. SWAT team, stop SWAT team uh, material and uh, vehicles, helicopter, and have uh, a hamburger and some an ice cream bar. Um, the next one was the Rancho Cuyahoga Athletic Association meeting. I attended that on June sixth, and um, with that, I, I I think they're going to approach. There's a, it came up uh, about renovation projects and how to keep them maintained after they've already been completed. 
which is something that we've dealt with for years. And they call it sustainability and how you can, you know, if you're going to have a new park, you got to be able to maintain it. So that's, um, they might be coming to ask for some assistance on that to the park district. Also, it came up with uh, something they were, they were talking about whether if you're a joint use with a school district and park, you have a joint use agreement. Does that mean that they share our insurance? If they have a, something like at Mitchell Middle School, if they had something in their gym, would that be shared with covered by the parks insurance? So that was another thing that I I think mean, spent some of me that I think we might have talked to you about. But that was one thing on their list that they were going to look into. Um, but, and also with the September 9th, the Ratchet Hall, Hall of Fame is, is going to be happening. So I guess they'd be aware of that. Um, the next one was Rosemont Community Heart, Art Poles Dedication. It was, uh, just, it, you know, I was very saddened when I got the email from uh, GM Larkin. So I, uh, went, I ran out there that night to look at it and I had seen what, I didn't see what it looked like before. I only heard that they were spray painted black. One was spray painted silver, and it doesn't make sense to me why someone would want to do that, especially to something that was so beautiful. Usually, people respect artwork, um, so it's, it's it goes beyond what, I, what people I think were thinking. It wasn't just you know vandalism; it was something else. Um, because there was nowhere else in the park that was that much, nothing else. Um, but it was, we still had community members stand up and speak and had held their head up high and say, we did it. We, we created an image, a park, an area, and we put a lot of resources together and to be proud of it, and uh, it always will be. And, and, and actually, if you look at them, like the director Langdon was saying, if you hadn't seen them before, you basically saw a pole that looked like it was just aged. It looked like it was antique. So it, it had a lot of character to them. The messages were a little bit wiped out because the black, they were painted with black paint too. And so maybe they were trying to get down, get rid of the day. They probably could go over and just touch up the black with the statements. Um, the next thing, I think the last thing on my rule is, is preliminary workout today. Okay. Um, I, I wasn't even one thing I did. I don't have these on my list, but I did go out to Hagen Park for the Juneteenth on Friday. They had a great uh, the Sacramento Urban League put on a, a great uh, celebration of Juneteenth. And uh, I was out there and I was like part of my family and enjoying that. And they also had something on Father's Day. I went out to Lincoln Village Park, the uh, park. Uh, the um, Bicycle Advocates for Rancho Cordova put on another Juneteenth event, and um, which featured booths and, and black owned uh, uh, operated uh, businesses. And it was just nice, another celebration. And I think, I think there's more to come. Juneteenth is still, still happening. Juneteenth is a great year, great month. So lots of things to happen, I think. But, uh, that's it. Thank you. Sorry, it took a No, this is just was quite a month, that's for sure. Last year, Dan. You're up. I am. Um, I just shy of what Dirk Sloan did by one event, so I'm not going to go into as many details. Um, I did attend the WH Williamson uh, Park Ribbon Cutting. It was, you know, another park in our district, which is, you know, great um, to be there and with the Williamson family, things like that. Um, we've spent some time with them and we're very happy for their donation of that parkland and very happy to have that park. That was May 13th, May 17th, CARPD uh, board meeting. That was the um, before the conference started. Um, just going over assignments for the, the, the week, knowing what's gonna happen, where financially we are, um, things like that. It was an interesting meeting. Um, I got 
as I said earlier in my uh, one of my earlier reports, I did get selected to be a moderator for something, and I was told out the fact that since I did such a good job that I will be continuing to do that till I'm no longer on that board. I was like, yay! Um, made after the conference, um, along with Chair Irwin and Secretary Sloan, we all made that long trek back to Sacramento from Yosemite for the Sacramento Valley of Life Steamers and General Manager Larkin. Um, we all did make that trek back for Sacramento Valley Live Steamers 50th anniversary and the California Mermaid Convention on our on our properties. So great celebrations for both. Um, it, uh, they keep growing uh, live steamers. I was amazed how many people were there. Um, but they, they had people literally from all over the country that came, but hearing the history of, of you know where they started and where they are, things like that. And they've actually recently been, um, they were featured on Facebook in the, uh, one of the California magazines is who they, who they were and they've been just at it. And they were showing old, old photos, which was kind of neat. So I shared that with the group because they didn't know that they were being featured. It just happened to be something that they, uh, that was there. Um, on June 2nd, I did head out to um, put on a golf course. We had demo days out there. Um, staff does a great job getting um, people out there um, to help fit clubs and show show our clients out at the golf course that there, there are new, new clubs out there that will actually improve your game. Um, I am one of those, not this time, but I have been in the past. Um, I have gone out there, hit, hit golf balls, and ended up buying new clubs. So it's great. There's a couple different vendors that we have that come out. Um, I know that we've got another one coming eventually. Um, according to the golf pro out there, he says he's looking at a new date and wasn't sure when that was yet, but is very excited and he, he enjoys doing it. Um, June 2nd, uh, Fettersville Park. Uh, walkway. Um, as I said earlier, it is something I talked to the staff about 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 65 years ago, when that park was built, it was a park. And as we know, parks back then, it was green grass. And I looked at Laura Taylor and Christina James, and I'm like, could you imagine building a park in 2023 without a walkway? And, and they both looked at me and they're like, it would never happen. You can't do that anymore. Um, you, you, have to, you have to have that. I mean, Sherry sure, and I both grew up in there and there were some sidewalks in the community when we grew up. Everything was just a curve and you walked where So to see that park, park now have that walkway, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. It's constantly in use. Um, the community truly appreciates it. Um, later that night, I did go over to Movies in the Park. Um, I did also on June 4th, I did head over to um, Scoop with Sheriff Cooper over the Rosemont Community Park. It was a great thing. The, you know, what, the, uh, what law enforcement is available for, and their assets for the community. Um, on June 7th, I did have a post conference CARPD board meeting. To go over get new committee assignments because we do have a new uh, president this year. I was elected president elect, um, but we were given new um, new committee assignments by the president. Um, I did change some committees. I did become the um, chair of the conference committee. That first meeting is August seventh. Um, so if anybody has any ideas where they might want to go, we did get some back from the members um, and we do have a date for that it is the third weekend i believe in may i, I will give that to you after the meeting Ms. jones but we um you know went through the financials showed how we how we did you know how many people came there was a concern i had um in a, in attendance we have more we had about the same amount of people that attended in tahoe that attended in yosemite but we had 10 less districts represented. So that was a concern of mine because the secretary had seen that list and who was actually there. So I wanted to know why, why that was different. I mean, this, this board typically sends three, three or five people. So that didn't concern me, but 
what what drew drew you know ten less districts to come to Yosemite? Was it location? Was it cost? Was it? And I'm still trying to figure out those answers. And then last thing that I had was today's primary budget motion. Chair Gerwig. It is your oh right. Good thing I went to a bunch of different things. Uh, <laughs> um, there's more happening. You have one. I, 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 shut up. Uh, so I, as well, on May 13th, uh, attended the uh, ribbon cutting for uh, WH Williamson Park, the nice little infill park, and I shared with uh, our general manager dates already being used in home uh, sell ads to as a reason to buy a house over in Mills Ranch. So it was prominently displayed in somebody's. Uh, Realtors' photos, so. uh, and then uh, let's see here. Yeah, I guess uh, obeying all uh, speed limits uh, required for Yosemite in Sacramento, I made it back to the <laughs> Live Steamers 50th anniversary. Um, it was a really nice event. Uh, uh, you know, I, I rode on those little trains when I was a kid. All my daughters rode on those little trains when they were kids. Um, it, uh, it, it was an amazing event. Uh, it was nice to hear from the folks who kind of started it, talking about all the collaboration they had with district staff, and they would just come over and say, what are you doing there? Oh, hold on, I got this better piece of equipment that'll do it for you in two hours, as opposed to you doing it by hand over a couple of weekends. So it was wonderful to hear those stories of all the, over the years, the people that helped them. Uh, I guess it has definitely grown. I had no idea that so many people came. I mean, there was, I don't know how many campers there. I was like, wow, this is like a cool one. Yeah, I, I guess I don't, I don't ever get out to that. So, uh, and then the Mosey on over to the old mermaid convention. Uh, I was there last year. It's definitely a lot bigger, a lot bigger this year. So, uh, so that's nice to see. Uh, and then let's see on, uh, I skip over anything there? Nope. On June 2nd, uh, the Federal Park uh, Walkway Improvement uh, Celebration. Uh, always nice since that was the park I grew up in as a kid to see it uh, looking so nice. and. The pathways are amazing. Uh, so, and uh, Angel Hall and all her hard work uh, paid off. So, uh, and I do, I drive by every once in a while, cutting through to somewhere else, and there's always people out there walking their dogs or doing something. So, it's, it's really nice. Um, <clears throat> stopped by uh, on the June 2nd as well over to the Mo uh, Moonlight Movies and did last uh, Friday as well. So, uh, perfect weather so far. They said, lucky they haven't gotten a lot of hot weather. So, um, that's nice. Uh, and I uh, get the scoop with Sheriff Coop on uh, June 4th. They were there as well uh, with several other directors. Uh, it was a nice event. Uh, it is amazing all the equipment they have. I don't know if anybody made it out to where Search and Rescue was, but next to it was this very cool mobile communication center. The poor ladies were out there all by their lungs. This thing was pretty, uh, I won't say it was pretty bad, something to figure out the other word. But, uh, and it was nice to have a chance to chat with a former Lancer, uh, Sheriff Cooper. So <clears throat> he wasn't happy that he was the oldest Lancer in the, in the group, but uh, so I was in the middle. <laughs> so, but uh, it was nice talking to him. Uh, and let's see, a leadership branch of graduation on June 8th. I was uh, there to recognize class 16. Sure, sure. was it 16? Yeah. yeah. Whatever's down here. Sixteen. Thank you. I saw that. Shelby, very, Shelby shake her head. Yes. Shelby confirms it was sixteen. Yes. It is very. It was wonderful. Uh, yeah, eight is wonderful. Um, uh, it's great. Uh, so, but it was very nice. I've been to one of those in a couple of years. So they had a one. Their project was phenomenal, and uh, I was lucky enough to be the only elected there, so I got to do the toast. Uh, so. Uh, and then let's see, uh, what else? Oh, the preliminary budget work shows. You know, I'm just going to run through real quick Matt's presentation if everybody has time and recap that. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, yes, let's do it. Let's do that. Yeah. So that's all I have. So I guess we will let me take a look here. We got the spectacles. I guess we're uh, moving on to uh, item I, comments by staff by non agenda items. Thank you. Item I one is the district by monthly progress report for June, and I'll turn it over to General Manager Larkin. So you all stole my thunder as well, apparently, because I was <laughs> along the journey with you at most of these events that you've reported out on already. Uh, so I'll spare the audience the details on repeating all of that. Um, we have some updates. Uh, just today, we were notified by our new office from the tenant improvements that we have passed all inspections. Our inspections and the permit from the city of Rancho Cordova 
Uh, we will be officially moving out of this building on Tuesday, June 27th. Uh, the furniture movers are coming that day. Uh, so it's going to take a little while to get settled in. Um, so we're excited, of course. You know, we passed all those inspections. They've done an amazing job with these kind of improvements who are excellent to work with. The crew is uh, very flexible. Um, and so we're excited to move in, of course. Uh, just so there's a note, um, we will be actually meeting in here uh, at City Council Chambers for the month of July and August with the hopes of moving into the board, uh, official new board room uh, for CRPD in September, pending everything technologically goes through, all the furniture, all that good stuff is ready to roll. So that's very exciting news. Uh, we met with Folsom Cordova Unified School District staff. Uh, they had come to us uh, with a proposal for their unhoused families and students in their school district to work with our foundation on allocating some funds that we typically have the foundation support our fee assistance program. Uh, they decided to fund the entire program $5,000 this year and $2,000 of that will be earmarked for specifically those kids in the school district. Uh, we'll be working with those staff to help those families fill out those forms that are required uh, and then help them register for the program so that more kids can participate in our programs without having to worry about you know their address or their forms or or you know what they need in order to participate. So we're really excited about that expansion um, with that program. Uh, kind of touches the heartstrings on that. So we're, uh, our foundation is really very able to support that as well. Uh, we have. Um, I just want to congratulate Shelby Colden. She was an amazing representative for Cove Recreation Park District at the Chamber of Commerce Leadership uh, Program this year. The project was fantastic. And so thank you, Shelby, and congratulations for completing that program. Um, Matthew also was a part of that program who just left. He's an audience member this evening. Uh, we have some overall resources are available um, is 271,750 overall resources used. So our budget is really looking quite well coming towards the final stretch here. Matt, you did a fantastic job with the preliminary budget. I know how hard you worked on it, as well as the staff to get us to that point. So kudos to all of the staff that contributed to uh, that body of work. But Matt, always again, quite a great job with your presentation and making things complex as simple as possible. So we all appreciate that. Um, in HR, we've successfully onboarded almost 80 new and returning recreation staff uh, to assist us with the aquatics camps, kiosk, and cashier positions. Um, we have our second round of community outreach meetings coming forward in the months of July and August for our optimized plan. Uh, we will officially share with those, um, those dates and locations with the board. We're intending to have one webinar and two uh, in-person community outreach meetings. One of the community outreach meetings will be slated for Prospect Hill Park in Gold River, and the second one will be at Lincoln Village Park during a family swim night. So more uh, dates specifically and times are coming your way. Just wanted to give you that for your radar. Uh, we did get honored with some funding uh, this past month and also an update on the Rosemont Community Park tennis courts. Uh, we have, it's been out to bid and the bids will be opened next week, June 29th. We will go with the lowest, most responsible bidder. And we're excited that we had a pre-walk bid and there were 11 uh, contractors that were interested in the project. Uh, so we're excited to see uh, what the variety is of those interested in helping us get that project uh, completed. We also received uh, an SHRA CDBG grant from Sacramento County for the Rosemont Community Park Miners Field Outfield Fence Replacement for $93,564. We're very excited about that uh, to make those improvements on the fence lines. There are some utilities on that fence line there that we're hoping to make it safer for the players where those will now be redrawn, I believe. So that those utilities are on the outside of the fence instead of the inside of the playing field. 
Um, we also received another SHRA CDBG grant for $61,465 to do Henley Park Accessible Pathways. So the county has been very generous with us lately. Um, and I give a lot of credit to the Rosemont community for their advocacy. Uh, they're bringing to the attention the Board of Supervisors, the needs that are in that community, and they've done a fantastic job uh, with advocacy, and we really appreciate that. An update at the Larchmont Tennis Courts. Uh, they will start the repair work next Monday, June 26th, and it will go for an entire week. The staff have signed it. It will be closed for the week. And we're hoping to have it completed by next Friday and reopened for the public and especially our tennis lessons that we're planning on for the following Saturday. Uh, Exploration Park is currently bidding uh, for this project. It's anticipated that it will be under construction this summer um, and it will be open to the public in the spring of 2024. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our amazing Director of Parks and Recreation, Jill Dennis. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Secretary Salone, I just want to answer your question about the insurance. Um, with any kind of joint use agreements or MOUs, um, each one of those organizations does need to have their own insurance. So even though, for example, we have a joint use agreement with the Folsom Cordova Unified School District, they provide us with a certificate of insurance every year. And then we also provide them with a certificate of insurance every year so that they have that just in case we use any other facilities. So if that helps answer your question. But I think they were talking about if, if a say Rancho Cordova Athletic Association had like a, a, a competition in the gym for youth. Any kind of rental, you're still going to need a certificate of insurance. Separate, so even like for us, if somebody rents out, um, let's just say uh, the major sports complex for a day, they still need to have a certificate of insurance. Correct. Yeah. Um, lots going on in the parks and recreation world. It is summer. Yay. Doesn't feel like summer, but it is summer. So lots going on. Uh, obviously, you all um, um, had a chance. Some of you had a chance to stop by the Mermaid con Convention. We're happy to be able to um, have that convention at the Cordova Community Pool. We'll hope to have that again next year. Uh, we had a couple other you know, community events throughout the month of June. In recreation, they are crazy busy, um, but we are proud to announce that we have partnered up with the Rancho Cordova Library to get kids reading this summer. So starting uh, June 1st, that was, um, and running through August 15th was when the program started in June, going through August 15th, the Summer Reading Challenge incentivizes children to read over the summer by offering them prizes for the number of books they read. So for every book a child reads, they accumulate points. Once they accumulate a certain number of points, they are allowed to pick a prize. And one of the prizes is to come to the Cordova or the Lincoln Village Community Pool for a swim. So we're hoping a lot of kids uh, take advantage of that system um, and that points and get some you know, good reading in this summer and take advantage of anything they can do in the community, uh, but hopefully they can come to one of our pools. Um, let's see. Uh, in the youth flag football world, we um, started our league on Friday, May 12th, and we kicked off our largest ever NFL youth flag football league under the lights of the Major Sports Complex, which is pretty exciting for those kids. So we're excited for the youth flag football league, and our Pee Wee Sports is also continuing just to grow and flourish. It's one of our most popular youth um, classes, and we'll be offering it again all summer long. So we're excited for all the youth and adult programs going on around the districts. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the pools are in full use, um, full scheduling of um, both uh, swim teams, the Cordettes, as well as the Blue Marlins, as well as open swim and then swim lessons galore. So uh, hopefully the weather gets a little bit warmer for people to be able to um, enjoy the pool and the pool deck uh, with some sun shining on them. And then in parks, they're always crazy busy. Uh, but on page 95, you'll see that one of our park staff, um, John Swartz, um, you know, revitalized um, a Dave Roberts uh, community park sign. Uh, I'm, I'm actually really impressed. Um, so you can see on the left, there's a picture of what it looked like. And we had to make several repairs to it. And then you, on the right, you can see the final product. product. So super proud of John Swartz and thank him 
uh, for his contribution to making sure that that sign gets back to um, what it used to look like. And then, you know, park staff's just, just crazy busy with all the parks, mulching, uh, mowing. Over at Hagen Community Park, we did finally get the playground repairs um, finalized for the playground that uh, was set on fire. And so that's all set and done. And then our staff got some training in scissor and boom lift, which is really, really key for our district. And so the district was able to purchase two lifts, uh, which of course require training and certifications. So the United Rentals came out and trained 18 of our supervisors and full-time staff in the operation, the safety of the scissor lift and boom lift. And what this will help us do is obviously continue to help maintain our parks, the lights, uh, tennis courts lights, pathway lights, um, some tree, you know, small tree pruning if we need to do it, and, and a whole bunch more, anything with any with our facilities. So we're happy and appreciate again the board's support and being able to get those lifts so that we continue to operate in the most effective and efficient way is to, to rent one of those for the day is about, you know, $800. And so it's nice to have our own that we can just uh, trailer to whatever location we need it um, to get those repairs done. So um, look for us out on the lifts. Marketing communications, super busy uh, month, just like you guys all report, reported. A lot of our staff, um, Shelby and her staff were out at some of those events. Um, on May 13th, obviously, the William H. Uh, Williston Park, um, they were out representing um, the district and taking photos um, out June 2nd at Fetterspiel and then a whole bunch of other events. So I'm really proud that we're getting out, um, you know, to these events representing CRPD with our booth and just information so the community knows who, who we are and what we represent. So Shelby, thank you and your staff for um, coordinating all that. And then the golf course, again, just looking amazing. Uh, the weather has helped, of course, the cooler weather. Uh, but we um, do have an accomplishment is that the judge netting has finally come out after almost a year, at least a year, it might even be more than a year, and they were able to finish the extension of the netting. So we now have um, a tall driving range netting um, pretty much in a U shape around the driving range. So that's really gonna help those neighbors to the east that unfortunately for some reason, you know, the district in the past did not decide to put up a full, you know, size net at that point, uh, but now we do. And so, so hopefully that will help protect some of, um, you know, the businesses and cars that park over on that east property. So yay, it's finally done, super excited. And then they made some other adjustments um, to the netting, and then they put up some netting in another gap that was closest to our parking lot and by Jackson Road. And then uh, some other good news on May 23rd, um, Daryl, um, who is our golf course manager, has been working with the Sacramento Tree Foundation, and they have granted us 57 new drought tolerant shade trees to be planted strategically around the course free of charge. Um, and so that is quite the accomplishment and something that if you've been out to the court of a golf course, you know, we've lost many, many trees over the years. Again, trees were planted that just are not, you know, drought tolerant trees. And so over the next, you know, starting in the fall and over the next couple of months after that, we'll start planting those trees um, with some help of some volunteers, um, board members, hopefully, and some staff to get that done. But we're super excited that we were able to, um, to get that we're grateful to the Sacramento Tree Foundation for their willingness to you know, provide us with those trees. So yay for that, great job. And then we have uh, lots of uh, events coming up. I know you just attended a lot of events, but we've got some more coming up in the next uh, month or so. Uh, National Hot Dog Day um, is over at the uh, NOSAC on Wednesday, July 19th at 1130. I know Chase will be over there because hot dogs is one of his favorite. <laughs> But before that, we do have um, this is a small event happening at the Hayden Community Park called the uh, 4th of July celebration. So um, I know that you all know about that. Um, we know that um, Vice Chair Gansel will be working that event. Um, but come on out Monday, July 3rd or Tuesday, July 4th from 4 to 11 p.m. We also have some staff that will be out there working um, alongside the Cordova Community Council, and we appreciate Parks and all the work that they put into to this very large event. So thank you, Jim and his staff. 
Um, and then the 4th of July parade, this is the first time since I've been here that we have participated in the 4th of July parade. So one of our brand new supervisors, we kind of, um, she picked the short straw and she is um, in charge of the, the parade. And so I know Patrick had an opportunity to chat with each one of you. So if you are interested in being part of our flow, um, please let Patrick know, and then we will pass that information on to Nicole so she knows to look for you on July 4th. Uh, we don't know where our float is starting from yet. We'll know that um, sometime next week. I think they were actually having a meeting tonight about it, um, if I can recall. So we should know soon when and where we will uh, meet, but we'll get that information out to anyone. We're really actually super excited to be a part of um, the July 4th parade, and we are obviously going to celebrate our 65th anniversary for our float. So look forward to that. Uh, the synchronized swim team does have an opera show. Um, you are all invited to come to the opera show on Saturday, July 15th, starting at 6 o'clock. And then our big party in the park, uh, which is going to be on a Saturday morning this time because the evenings are getting a little warm for people. And so Saturday, July 22nd, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Rosemont Community Park. So with that, that completes and finishes and finalizes my report. Why, thank you. Wonderful report. Appreciate it. question? Well, sure. Um, did you say that the Cornette is at 6 or 6.30? It's 6, so 6 to 8 p.m., but it really starts at 6. Okay. Um, yeah. Also, I don't know if you guys are aware that of the David Garibaldi, the artist, is going to be out at the Green Park on July 1st. You know who that is? The guy who paints these crazy things and turns it over and becomes like, Obama, oh my God. It looks like you're going to get the subject. Yeah. No, that, <laughs> that would be something to behold. Um, they're, 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 he's painting three paintings and they have something to do with uh, something in the record. So I have no idea. The city will own one and the other two, the city can buy. But uh, the point of the city, you know, it, it, it could be very interesting. I, and I think there's a contract before that. Too, so. Um, also, I want to ask a question. Are we doing any type of study about you know, uh, our branding out there in the, in the community of most of it comes with the, at our parks and monument sign? And like I, I see that David Roberts sign, and that's a little small little community park sign, about this big. Larchmont uh, community park, the same size, um, wooden sign. Uh, Stone Creek has one that says City of Rancho Cordovas, Stone Creek Park. You know, like, all these different names out there. I wonder if is there anything down the line earmark to get these things all unified? <laughs> yes, uh, we have had different standards throughout the years. We're 65 years old. So the ideal situation would be we're addressing them with the parks that currently do not even have a money on that side. Uh, so we have in the budget next year, uh, I'd be independent of maybe that is one of them actually. Uh, so we're starting there incrementally. We're putting in the budget, and we have been putting in the budget every year, uh, addressing the standard. Uh, so some of the standards uh, have recently changed um, based on some of the models that we have. So the monument itself will be pretty standard. The size of the monuments from where they are now, in most cases, will be larger based on the experiences that we've already done. We're not going to replace the smaller monuments that we've done. We would look to replace like the Dave Roberts sign sooner than we would go back and replace a smaller monument sign on something that's been relatively new. Um, so yes, we have a plan. We've changed those standards and we're moving forward in that direction. Now saying that, there's also a movement that I've asked for us to consider for some of the new parks that I'm asking to have a theme for those parks, like Exploration Park is a theme. So I wanted the staff to approach those monument signs maybe a little bit more creatively if we have the funding associated with being able to do that. So yes, overall, there'll be a standard and it is currently what, what we're seeing out there, but there are in some cases, based on what the theme of that park will be, there may be a more embellished monument sign uh, if we can afford it. So 
Uh, that's kind of our move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we will I guess move on to J informational items. Thank you. Item J1 is articles, correspondence, and public outreach. We have two articles. There was one email blast for the visit, visit Red and Cordova survey, two newsletters, and then J2 is your calendar. Excellent. So I guess it's time to move on to item K. Is that correct? Uh, closed session. Uh, would you care to announce the item? Thank you. Before I announce the item, I'll just note for the public on the call that we will close down the Zoom meeting and then restart the Zoom meeting when we reconvene to open session. So we have one item in closed session. Item K1 is a liability claim pursuant to California Government Code Section 54956.9. The claimant is Linda Hamilton, and the agency claimed against is Cordova Recreation and Park District. All right, I guess we will just close the session at 8.15. All right, we're going back into a uh, closed session at 8.36 uh, on item K1. Uh, the board voted to uh, 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 reject the claim. Being Director Maddens, Director Langdon, Vice Chair Dandel, Secretary Yearwood, and Secretary Sloan, or I'm sorry, Chair Yearwood, and Secretary Sloan abstained. All right, so we are ready to move on to the next item. Oh, item M, adjournment. Uh, we are adjourning to the next regular meeting of the Board of Directors of the Carroll Recreation Park District on Wednesday, July 19th, 2023, at 6 30 p.m. All right, we're golden, golden, and we're out. What? Clear. Anyone get paid? What? You abstain. Oh, not.